General Secretary of the RMT, one Mr Mick Lynch. He's picked up what can only be described uh, as a cult following after his candid interviews racked up millions of views on social media. So, are you or aren't you? <laughs> Richard, you do come up with the most remarkable twaddle sometimes. What will they do if agency workers try to cross those picket lines? Well, we will picket them. What do you think we'll do? We run a picket line and we'll ask them not to go to work. You are a liar. OK, well, let's just... let the let, go ahead. And you're a liar. Let's just move... Do you think I look like the most evil person in the world, Piers? Well, now you're asking me to, to answer a difficult question, Mick. I don't know you that well. <laughs> He's even picking up some celebrity fans with Hugh Laurie, King of the Lovies, tweeting his support. <laughs> Meanwhile, dozens of Labour MPs have been defying Keir Starmer, strangely enough, and supporting the union, including Richard Berger, <coughs> who joined the picket line in Leeds today. I think it's important that uh, Labour MPs uh, and the Labour Party shows whose side we're on. The Conservative government shows which side it's on. Nicker stood with strikers today when he stood next to them holding a coffee. It's had an interesting <laughs> week, as Gary. Um, so Lynch, <laughs> Labour MPs, and maybe even Gary Lineker, are, more looking, are looking more authoritative than Keir Starmer on this issue. Well, I mean, I think my dog's looking more authoritative <laughs> than Keir Starmer on this issue, who still hasn't actually said whether he supports the strikes or not. He doesn't seem to know. And making a threat, that, as he did, that he would somehow, you know, discipline anybody that went and stood on a picket line hasn't exactly worked too well. I think about 30-odd Labour MPs have now done it. And yeah. he's done nothing to them. I mean... I think Keir Starmer's in a bit of trouble over this, isn't yeah. he, Nicola? Mick Lynch has done more for the Labour Party in two days than Keir Starmer has done in two years. He has become a cult figure, and like it or not, Jeremy, he's very popular among younger audiences, people who feel like here is somebody who's standing up for themselves. Amazing the way that he dealt with all those interviews. Awful questions thrown towards him. This is the most important issue facing Brits at the moment. It, it's all surrounded um, with the cost of living crisis. And he was getting asked ridiculous questions and he held his own he came out on top he wasn't flustered like some of us on the left can get sometimes <laughs> he held his own and he was funny as he did it and he got so much charisma i would want him to be labor leader two things one really? one cult figure the last time we had a cult figure like that it was jeremy corbyn i think yeah. we all remember that at glastonbury they were singing his name they were singing his name let's see how that happened and secondly don't you think that it's just that we that at the moment there are many people who feel that the people in government are being, they're, they're mealy mouthed, they don't say what they mean, we don't even trust them anyway when they do actually say what they mean necessarily. <laughs> and he uses words that are quite old fashioned, like twaddle and, uh, and various you know, other words like that. And mm. I think a bit like, I don't know if you saw that series that Emma Thompson was in, uh, which was called Years and Years, and she, she was getting voted in, even <laughs> though the, quite a lot of people said, oh no, I don't agree with at all with what she said, but I really like the way that she says That's it. it. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, but he's a sort of cartoon <laughs> character union leader, isn't he? I mean, he's like the guys that used to be around in the 70s, like Red Robbo. He's got that kind of feel about him. And so he's made for these kind of television debates, isn't he? Well, the thing is, he's a working-class guy who is sticking up for his working-class people. And whether whether you agree with what he's doing or not... On 124 grand a year. But yeah, working-class people can earn a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's... I didn't say they couldn't. No, but that's what makes me proud to be British. Is he is taking that... strike pay, by the way? I don't know, is he? Is he? I have no idea. But ask him. what makes me proud to be British is that you can be born into a working class <coughs> family and work your way up to earn 120 odd thousand pounds. I think we should be proud and celebrating that rather than using that as a mark against him. Yeah. I'm not using it against him. I just think that he's only got one thing, thing in mind, and that is to, to wreck the Tory party and to get the Tory uh, party. I, 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 I said, said, it, said, I said it the other day. Um, I don't know what his, what his workers think. Um, I suspect they have voted for the, yeah. the action that he's taking, and, and that's elected. their response. But I just, I just go back to what I said. I think, I think tonally right now, some of the rhetoric initially, you can do a piece there that says he's he's done one or two uh, people in an interview. I wouldn't possibly imagine that dealing with Richard Madeley is difficult, but that's just a personal thing. <laughs> um, I'm just being straight. You know, let's let's not mess around. Um, but would you agree with that? Moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but, it, but in all honesty... And other media uh, pick I, I think <laughs> if, if we give him any benefit of the doubt from that on, and, and you won't agree, but, but saying I'm going to get rid of those Tory butchers, and by the way, it could be Labour, you cannot... When a union person starts speaking like this, whatever anybody around this table says, that sends shockwaves to certain parts of society. Mm. I think going back to what we were saying is... <laughs> 
everybody needs to understand there's a cost of living crisis and everybody, the working wage needs to be raised for lots of people. A, how do we do it? Mm. A, 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 and B, how do we afford it? Um, uh, you know, I just said that about, you know, the, the train companies. They need to take responsibility. I just, I just yeah. feel post-pandemic... This is the train companies. And I'm not sticking That's up for Boris Johnson. I just think post-pandemic, we are increasingly seeing a lot of people in this country who think... I mean, I had an email the other day from a bloke in Wolverhampton who said it's raining. Can you get Boris to send yeah. us some umbrellas? Yeah. It's getting ludicrous. Do you not agree? It uh, yeah, it, yeah, it, it might be. But actually, with Mick Lynch, we've got someone who's sticking up for people who want a yeah. bit more cash. And yeah, you're saying but, we no, all want it. No, I what you've it, got is a guy who's going it. on television more than he is actually going into negotiations. He's, he's making a name in. for himself. He was elected. He wasn't and, elected and, to go on television. He was elected to get a deal. Listen, he was elected to be their voice, and that's what he's doing. That means going on TV. We're talking about it. He walks out of He's done perfectly. But he's not doing his job. So the point is, he'll go on question time. He will eventually make a fool of himself, and that'll be the last you hear of Mick Lynch.